here, we're pre-recording a couple of presentations that we didn't have room to put in the evening, and we're glad to have them recorded. This is the night to stop Israel's war crimes and crimes against humanity on the people of Gaza. Tonight, Raymond Nat Turner is performing a poem about the Oslo Peace Plan. Raymond. Sugar Hill Play Day versus Oslo Peace Plan. He refers to me as my friend Raymond, and I feel honored. Gael, my three year old Sugar Hill Harlem neighbors, an old soul, a 35 pound question mark, eyes sparkling with curiosity. Chasing life down the street like a three-foot exclamation point. His mommy's a surgeon, studying for her boards. His granny's a Rutgers professor, working on her book. And I? I am awarded a play date with Gael. He has that spark, that curiosity, relative peace, who blesses few of the world's children with. He also has every truck under the sun and knows precisely what each truck does and why. He's more than willing to teach me tonight, but first he warns that work cannot begin for jamming his bright yellow hard hat securely over his jet black curls and bubbling his utility tool belt low and tight. Clearly, he's studied style and moves of the working class and has them down. Looking up to and mimicking neighborhood men who work on Abuela's brownstone. Gael's brilliant imagination creating useful tasks, needed work for each truck, maintenance for himself, and showing me how the crane on one truck in his fleet works. It's becoming clear he doesn't trust me with the trucks. If I were Guy L, I wouldn't trust the trucks or other equipment in grown-up hands. Even his brilliant imagination cannot comprehend the twisted, burning, bloody bulk of metal mixed with pieces of cloth, shoes, driver, and assistant, once called an ambulance. Gael is blessed to believe Abuela and his mommy will protect him from harm, feed him when he's hungry, hydrate him with cool, clean, clear water after he's played hard and is thirsty. They will read to him, sing sweet, sleepy time lullabies, and put him down for a safe, peaceful nap when war with the Sandman proves hopeless. G doesn't cringe at loud sounds, and no nightmares haunt him, making him pee in the bed. So I must spare him the fractured fairy tale of the ambulance, the fractured fairy tale of Oz, where one group's told, follow the Frankenstein road, where Guy L's trucks would get different colored license plates, travel apartheid roads, in shadows of an apartheid wall, bisecting the land like a jagged Frankenstein scar. And his trucks would be stopped at checkpoint after checkpoint after checkpoint after checkpoint by heavily armed, hostile teenage thugs vibrating bigotry through iron domes and hankering to cast lead, perforating colorful skins of Gene's trucks like Swiss cheese, with armor piercing bullets from white knights of the Five Side Kingdom. Traveling Oz by truck, Gael would learn strange new words, old words used in strange new ways, occupation, relocation, put them on a diet, mow the grass, ethnic cleansing, genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, collateral damage, 
targeted killings. I spare him the fraction fairy tale of Oz, where caterpillars crunch on homes, toys, and olive trees crush activists and call it security. I spare him the fractured fairy tale where Third Reich impersonators order collars at consoles to send featherless birds, shitting fire shrapnel and white phosphorus with errant precision and call it defense. I spare him the fractured fairy tale of Oz, leaving little ones like him piled in ice cream freezers, slowing their decomposition and the other shredded, sliced, and diced so badly that even his surgeon, Mommy, could not, like Humpty Dumpty, put their tiny heads, arms, legs, and faces back together again. Even if she could, the Oslo peace process allows bombing hospitals, patients, and surgery, just as it allows bombing schools, shelters, mosques, electric and water treatment, plants, and homes. I spare him the fractured fairy tale of once upon a time, a land without people for a people without land, like Oz, an unsinkable aircraft carrier, weapons lab, and biennial trade show for white knights of the five side kingdom. WMD gods and prophets reigning green for every overloaded donkey cart squealing and moaning like mothers of the itty bitty, teensy weensy, bloody bodies piled in them. Karen Bass can't hear it, Barbara Lee can't hear it, John Conyers can't hear it, Charlie Rangel can't hear it, Judas Quisling, Congressional Black Pocket can't hear it, while crying Raytheon war profiteers into Swiss bank accounts. I spare my friend fractured fairy tales of Oz, where their heart and prayers of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue's residents go out, feel your pain, except on Tuesdays when Hellfire missiles go out inflicting pain, breaking hearts. I spare my friend fractured fairy tales of Oz where cauliflower ear Barbara Boxer can't hear squealing, moaning wheels of overloaded dummies and carts and misenhanced interrogation technique die five only wants to be kept in the loop. Which weapon systems log the most kills. Forget halting the Oslo peace process, allowing Oz to stoop low as it dares, filling donkey carts with little bodies, checkpointing trucks like my friends, stealing the land they travel, piece by piece by piece by piece.